Hey everyone, it's Mr. Ray here with our next lesson in Grade 11 University Math. Uh, we are starting a new unit on trigonometry today. This will be a continuation of the trigonometry we learned in Grade 10. Um, we're going to go above and beyond with some new ideas and concepts. Uh, but to start off with, uh, the first lesson we're just going to kind of review what we learned in Grade 10, in case you forgot, uh, because these skills are very important for the subsequent lessons we'll be doing. Um, now, what I'm going to cover today is uh, three things, trigonometric ratios and sine law and cosine law. So hopefully those uh, ring a bell. And once I start talking about it, hopefully it uh, it'll all come back to you. Okay, uh, so for trigonometric ratios, and remember trigonometry is, it's just a Latin name for uh, measurements of triangles and there's there's only two things we can measure in a triangle um, and that's the angles and the side lengths so uh, three angles and three side lengths so uh, that's what we're going to be working with in this whole unit so um, for trigonometric ratios uh, in order to use them you have to have a right triangle which means a 90 degree angle in one of the corners which is usually a uh, little box in the corner, so there's our right angle. Um, now, before we start using trigonometric ratios, we have to name the three sides. Um, the first side we can name right away, hypotenuse, is always directly across from the 90 degree angle. It's always the longest side of the triangle. Um, in order to name the other two sides, we first of all have to decide which angle, which of these two acute angles, are we going to use as a reference angle? We never use the 90 degree angle as a reference angle. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. So uh, if I decide I'd like this angle to be my reference angle, and there's a little uh, letter down there, it's, it's called theta. If I enlarge it, it would look like that, sort of like an egg with a little happy face there. Um, that letter in math is almost exclusively exclusively used for unknown angle measurements. So uh, you'll see that quite a bit as you remember. Uh, so if that's my reference angle, uh, th now I can name the other two sides. So we have the opposite side, that's the side that's opposite our reference angle. Just like hypotenuse was opposite the 90, the opposite side is opposite our reference angle. Uh, we, um, and then the third side is called adjacent, which is the well, it's the one left over, but adjacent means next to, and what it means is it's next to the reference angle. Uh, we can shorten these three sides uh, to either three letters, HYP, ADJ, or OPP, or eventually just a single letter, H, O, and A. Um, so, um, what, the way we use uh, uh, trigonometric ratios, a ratio is basically comparing two measurements of something. Uh, so trigonometric ratios is basically uh, picking two of the three sides and giving it a name for, for that specific ratio. For, so for example, the tangent ratio is, uh, so the, uh, is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Um, and we always include, when we use the, our tangent function, or tan for short, we always include well which angle are we are we referring to because I could actually have two different variables uh, for those two angles so the tan for theta tan ratio for theta is opposite over adjacent which would be the ratio of those two sides and similarly we have uh, something called the sine ratio which we shorten to sin it's still pronounced sine not sin uh, which is using the opposite side and the hypotenuse side and getting that ratio of the lengths. And the cosine ratio is using adjacent and hypotenuse sides. So you can see these are the three possible combinations of two sides, uh, and we have a name for all three of them. Um, now, the way we're going to use this is there's a direct correlation between the ratios, uh, uh, the number we get here, uh, and the actual angle. Um, so that ratio and sorry, that ratio and the the name of the ratio 
uh, can get us the actual measurement of the angle. It can also be used to find one of the two sides if we knew the angle and uh, one of the two sides in the ratio. So it's a very powerful tool. It allows us to get unknown sides or angles depending on which uh, information is available. And you'll probably be forced to use one of these three based on the information given. Okay, now uh, it's kind of hard to remember all of, the, all of these three uh, combinations of ratios. So if you remember the word Sokotoa actually allows you to remember all three by breaking it down into these three parts. For example, sine of the sine ratio is opposite over hypotenuse and you know the rest. Um, now we also have what we call inverse functions which we'll be uh, showing in one of the examples and that will that's basically most math functions have inverse which undoes uh, another function. So just like squaring and square root, we have we have the sine function and we have the sine inverse function along with cos, cos inverse and tan, tan inverse. So those will allow us to actually figure out uh, the actual angle length, or sorry, angle measurement um, using those inverse operations. Okay, uh, so we kind of talked about this. Uh, yeah, if we knew all three sides, we could we could choose which of these three ratios to use, but in most cases, uh, they don't give us all three sides, or it's not available. So we have to pick the the one ratio that can work with the information being given. Uh, so let's have a look at example one here. I've got two triangles, and in both cases, I've got um, I got all three sides. I've got my reference angle here, theta, and you see how the reference angle here doesn't happen doesn't have to be down on the bottom. It could be anywhere. Um, and I got my th three sides. Okay, uh, so it says find the three uh, primary trig ratios for theta, express the ratios as decimal rounded to four decimal places. So uh, the first thing, like I talked about earlier, is to name the three sides. So in this case, we've already got our reference angles chosen for us. So this will be the hypotenuse, because it's opposite 90 degrees. This will be opposite, because it's opposite the reference angle. This is adjacent. Similarly, this is hypotenuse. I guess we could put brackets around. Uh, that's hypotenuse. Opposite is over here this time, and adjacent is here. Okay, so if I want to come up with my, go back to my formulas for sine, cos, and tan, or just go from my Sokotoa word, I know that sine theta is equal to well, let's use the single letters, O over H. And if we find those measurements for our first triangle, that's going to be 10 over 26. And if I do the four decimals from my calculator, I get uh, 0.3846. And if I do the cosine ratio of that angle theta, this time it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So I guess you can't see that. Now you can. So adjacent is 24. Hypotenuse is 26. And this time the ratio is 0.9231. And then tan of theta is opposite over adjacent, which is 10 over 24, which is 0 0.41. Six, seven. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out about the sine and the cosine ratios. Remember I mentioned that the hypotenuse is always the longest side. So both of these ratios have the hypotenuse as the denominator. So that means the top number is always going to be less than the bottom number, which means this ratio always has to be less than one. Okay. Um, if you ever saw one of these bigger than one, or you made a calculation, you'll see that uh, you made a mistake somewhere along the way. Um, and then the tangent ratio, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with the hypotenuse. It's the other two sides. So anything goes with that number. It could be bigger than one, less than one. 
it could actually be, you know, I've seen them as high as like seven. Um, so you can't really tell if you've made a mistake by looking at that because it, there's a lot that's possible there. If I go to the second triangle now, do the same thing. So this time I got sine theta so O over H. This time it's uh, 6.4 over 7.6, which is 0 0.8421. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 4.1 over 7.6. which is 0.5395. And finally, tan theta is opposite over adjacent, which is 6.4 over 4.1. And this time you can see this number is bigger than 1, 1.5609. Okay. Now, what does all this mean? It doesn't really give you any angles. But it allows us to get the angles, and we'll see how in the next question. Um, these ratios themselves don't really provide you any useful information, but it's kind of an inter intermediate step that allows you to get figure out what that angle actually is. So let's do that in the next example. Okay, I want to keep those measurements still there. Okay, uh, example two, find the missing angles from the triangles in example one using trig ratios. Okay, now, we actually know all three ratios, so we could use any one of them uh, to figure out what the angle is. That won't be the case in most, most questions. Most of the time you'll only have one available ratio which you would then use uh, to find the angle. So I want to show you that uh, all three of them get you the same answer. So um, it can start off with, if I looked at the sine ratio, it's basically sine theta equals 0.386. Um, you can kind of ignore the middle part now. Uh, if I want to just get theta, well, right now I've got sine theta. So how do I get rid of the sine? function part. This is where the sine inverse comes in. So what I would do is take the sine inverse of sine theta and just get theta. And I also have to do it to the right side. So to be taking uh, sine inverse of 0.3846. So if we do just assume we're, we've already taken the sine inverse of both sides. So that means theta would be sine inverse of 0.3846. And if you do that on a calculator, you will get 22.6 degrees. Okay, now if we tried the same thing using the cosine ratio that we got, uh, this time we take the cos inverse of both sides, so we can get rid of the cosine function part. So when we do that, we get theta equals cos inverse of that ratio, 0.9231. Do that on a calculator, around the nearest tenth of a degree, we also get 22.6. And if we do the same thing for take the tan inverse of both of these sides, we get theta equals tan inverse of 0 0.4167. And to no one's surprise, 22.6 is the measurement of that angle. Okay, but like I said, you usually won't have the luxury of choosing which one you like the best. It'll be one and only one that's usually available to use based on the information given. Okay, if we do the same thing for for the second triangle, um, again, you can see if we take the sine inverse of both of these, we get theta equals sine inverse 0 0.8421. If you do that on a calculator, we get 57.4 degrees. We take the cos inverse of both of these, we get theta equals cos inverse 0.5395.
again, 57.4 degrees. Finally, take the tan inverse of both of these two sides. So theta is the tan inverse of 1.5609, also 57.4 degrees. Okay, so uh, one thing to be careful of when you're working on your calculator, make sure your uh, measurements, angle measurement units are set to degrees um, because it's set, it's sort of like temperature. Uh, so, you know, we could use Celsius or Fahrenheit or Kelvin to measure our temperature. Um, well, there's different units that we can measure angles. So by far the most common would be degrees, but uh, you'll see in grade 12, we actually use something called radians. And there's a third measurement as well called gradients. So if you look for a button DRG on your calculator, that usually toggles between the three, uh, three uh, measurement types. So make sure you're on degrees, otherwise all your answers will work, will not be correct. Okay, so that's the, uh, uh, that's the tangent ratio, sorry, the uh, trigonomet trigonometric ratios. Uh, there are some homework questions on this where you can practice that. Um, so what do you do if you don't have a right triangle? Well, the first thing we're going to try to do is use something called the sine law. And you're only going to use sine law for non-right triangles. There's no point in using it for a right triangle because it's easier to use trig ratios. So don't, don't think you can just learn one tool and use it for every triangle. You've got to learn all three of these tools. So here's the formula for the, uh, the sine law. So it's the, it, again, it's a series of ratios. Uh, now let's look at this triangle ABC. You've got your capital letters in the corners where the vertices are. They also are the names of the angles. Um, what we're going to do, so we can understand how this formula works, is the opposite side from each angle will be the lowercase letter of that letter. That didn't make sense, but uppercase A, which is the vert, vert, vertice or the angle here. If we look across to the opposite side, we're going to call that lowercase a. Lowercase b is across from angle b. Lowercase c is across from angle c. So don't get confused with the different cases. They're important to know because one is a side, one's an angle. Okay, so you can see how this ratio works. It's the side um, ratio of the side with the sine of the opposite angle. All three sides and angles are in these three ratios. All three of these ratios, if you had all six measurements, all three ratios would be exactly equal. It's kind of cool. Um, and we actually have two versions of the sine law. You can see if I took this uh, series of ratios and I turned everything upside down, well, they'd still be equal. So we could use the kind of reciprocal version where instead of the sides on the top, you've got the angles on the top. Okay, um, which one should you use? It depends on what you're trying to find. If you're trying to solve for an unknown side, you should use the formula with the sides on the top. If you're trying to solve for an angle, use the version with the sign of the angles on the top. Okay, so let's try that out here. So in this case, we have triangle TUV and we're given a couple sets of information. Two, it looks like two sides and one angle and they're asking us for a third angle, for a second angle, V. So, always should just draw a little sketch of what's going on and in a lot of cases, really don't have any idea what this triangle looks like. Can't really imagine it in my mind. So I just draw a kind of a Random triangle, I label it TUV, and then I start putting in the information. So for example, it says that TU is 11.1 centimeters, that's here. Uh, it says also UV is 5.8, UV is over here. So you notice they're, they're not using the little letter TUVs here, they're actually using the, the endpoints of the sides. So You'll see that's done as well. We just need to know how to use it for the sine law and cosine law too. 
Um, and then the third piece that we have is angle T, which is 31 degrees. So I'll put that here. So we know three of the six pieces of information. They've asked us to find angle V. Figure out that. Okay. So where do I start? Well, um, I guess we'll just start filling in the, uh, the sign law. I'll use the generic form. Uh, I'm going to change the letters from ABC to TUV. Um, but which version should I use? If I'm trying to find an angle, that means I should use the version with the sign of the angles on top. So I'm going to start off my formula. And since I already know I'm trying to find this angle V, I'm going to start that off as my upper left uh, value. So sine V over, it would be the opposite side here. Um, I'll call it little v for now. Uh, and then let's put the other two as well. Sine u over little u and sine t over little t. And now we're going to fill this in. So obviously we don't know what uh, what that v is, uh, the angle v, but we do know what the side is. So we'll just fill in what we do know and leave the rest as it was. No, I'm not going to put in units in this formula. Uh, we'll come back to that later. All right, so sine u, angle u and side u here, we know nothing about them. So fortunately, unfortunately, nothing to, to add there. But the angle t, we know that's 31. So sine 31 over little t, which is 5.8. Okay, so now that we've filled in these three ratios, now it's our job to pick which two are we going to use to solve for what we want. Um, now, since we already know we're trying to find angle V, that's, that's in this ratio. So I definitely want to have this as one of my two. Um, now it comes down to these two. It's pretty obvious which one's the most useful. This has nothing, no information. So that's not going to be used. That will be used. So the other ratio that you pick has to have both of the values uh, in it. Otherwise, you would have two unknowns to solve in one equation, and you can't do that. So, uh, so what I'll do now is I'll just rewrite this with the middle part taken out. Sine v over 11.1 is equal to sine 31 over 5.8. And now it's just a matter of solving for v. So the first thing we do is I uh, want to get rid of the 11.1 because I'm trying to get down to the v. So multiply both sides by 11.1. So I get sine V is equal to, now when I multiply this by 11.1, I only multiply on the top. So 11.1 sine 31 over 5.8. Um, and here's where we're gonna use the inverse again, just like we did in sample two. Uh, if I want to get angle V from this sine V function, I apply the inverse. So I take the sine inverse of both sides and I get angle V is equal to sine inverse of this whole thing, 11.1 .1 sine 31 divided by 5.8. Um, and now we put this into our calculator. You notice I didn't do any interim calculations. It's always more accurate if you just, if you can try to do one calculation at the end and then do your rounding there. If I was to do, if I was to do that and round and then do this and round and then do this and round, I would be rounding three times. And uh, the chance of me getting a, a less accurate answer is pretty high if you're rounding three times for one calculation. Okay, so if we do this in a calculator and round to the nearest degree, we get 80 degrees. So that's our answer. Um, and then we could go back and fill that in if you felt like it. So that's how we use sine law. In this case, we used it to find a, a, a missing side. So one of the things about sine law you saw from what we were doing in this section here, um, you can see that we have to have one of these ratios that we call complete. And by complete, I mean you have to know basically an angle and its opposite side. So uh, when it comes to deciding, can we use sine law for this question? Uh, it comes down to, do I do I know an angle and its opposite side? So you can tell 
just by looking, yes, I do, I know that. And you have to have one other piece of information, and that's going to be the uh, either another side or another angle. So in this case, we know 11.1, .1, so we can use the sine law. Okay. So what if we don't know, what if we don't have enough information uh, to use the sine law? Um, then we use something called the cosine law. So the cosine law kind of boils down to two specific cases uh, where you would say, well, I can't use sine law for this, but I definitely can use cosine law. So the two cases, we can use these three letter acronyms, SSS, that stands for side, side, side. So if all you know about a triangle are the three sides, you can use cosine law, okay? And the second case is if you know a uh, side, angle, side. Now this, is, uh, this isn't just any two sides and, and an angle. Uh, the angle that you have to know is the angle that's uh, between the, where those two sides connect. So it's kind of like side, angle, side has to be, we call that enclosed angle. So if you if you have a situation where all you know is the three sides or all you know is two sides and the enclosed angle, you can't use sine law, but you can use cosine law. Okay, so here is the basic formula. You can see it's, you know, it's a little more complicated than sine law, definitely more complicated than trig ratios. Uh, and if you look at it, it kind of looks like the Pythagorean theorem, it starts off that way, but then you do this adjustment. Um, and it really is a like a alteration of the uh, Pythagorean theorem. This is kind of corrects if you don't have a 90 degree angle. So uh, you notice you've got three sides listed for all. These are just three different versions of the same formula. Um, but you've only got one angle in each of the equations. So you have to be careful the way you set up your equation. So we'll look at that in a, in a minute. Um, there is an alternate version if you're solving for the angle. I know a lot of students like to use this alternate version. Personally, I don't like it, um, but uh, if it works for you, that you can use that version as well. Okay, um, so there's a question here, a final question. Uh, it says solve a triangle using cosine law. So solving a triangle uh, basically it means solving a triangle means find all the measurements of this triangle. So you'll almost always be given three different measurements. I think that's the lowest you can have. Um, so if you're solving that triangle, that means you've got to find three unknowns. So it could be two two sides and an angle or one side and two angles, um, or it could even be three angles. So uh, let's look at how we would do this. So again, it's giving us this information about the triangle. It's triangle DEF this time, so let's just make a generic triangle. Put in our sign in our vertices, DEF. Okay, and now we can start filling in what we know. So uh, side little d is 4.9, so little d is over here. And then f, little f is opposite angle f, that's 6.2 centimeters. And angle e is 64 degrees. So 64. Okay, so that means we have to find this side here, little e. We also have to find the angles D and F. So, um, first thing I would do is kind of say, is this a right angle triangle? Well, it might be, but I have no idea at this moment, so I assume it's not. So therefore I can't use trig ratios, but I let's, can we use sine law? So remember sine law, you had to have a complete set, uh, an angle in its opposite side, and you can see well, there's the only angle I know, and I don't know the opposite side, so I can't use sine law. So, I have to see if we can use cosine law. So, what information do we have? Well, this is the side angle side situation, two sides and a closed angle. Yes, I can use uh, cosine law for this. So, 
I'm going to set up the formula, and I have to be careful about this because, remember, the cosine law only has one angle in the formula, so it better be this angle here, otherwise we won't have enough information. So, that means, if I just go back to my formula here, so that means in this position here, I need to have a capital E for angle E. And the way this uh, formula works, it's very symmetrical. So whatever letter I have using for the angle, well then I have this side, uh, associated side by itself in the front. And then the other two sides up here, here, and here, they're, they're squared and added together. And they're also multiplied here. So if I'm making the formula I need for this specific triangle, I know that uh, that first letter has to be little e squared. And then I've got my other two sides. Uh, so d and f, d squared plus f squared minus 2, and then df multiplied together, and then multiplied with cosine e. So I didn't put any measurements in yet. I have to make sure that I've got the right formula written out here. I need to have that angle E in here so it looks good. All right, so if you notice what I've got, so I've, I've, got, I've got angle E obviously, but I also have sides D and F. So what that means is I'm gonna be solving for this side over here, E, e squared. I, that's the only option I have. I can't, uh, I can't get one of these other angles first. That has to be the second step. Okay, so the first step is solving for this side E. Uh, now I'm going to plug in all my values. So in this case, D is 4.9, F is 6.2, and then I got 2 times 4.9 times 6.2 times cosine of 64. Okay, to start simplifying this. So if I square these values. 24.01, 38.44, uh, and then I'm just going to do this for now without the cosine. That's going to be minus 70.76 cosine 64. Okay, now you have to be careful here because of bed mass, you have to do this multiplication first. So if you, you know, you can't add these two and then subtract 60 and then multiply it by, that would that would break all the rules of bed mass. So if you put brackets around here, it's extra safe. There's no inclination to try to combine these three together first. Um, if I do my calculation, the 60.76 times cos 64, and if I at the same time add these two together, those two add to 62.45 and when I multiply these two together, I get 26.64. So get rid of the formula. Okay, and it's looking a lot simpler now. If I subtract those, I get 35.81. And then what we do is we take the square root of both sides. So I would get, and uh, now, what, do, what should I round this to? It doesn't, well, it, it, I guess it does tell us rounding measurement to nearest degree for angles and tenths of centimeters for sides. So this is a side. So I'm going to round that to 6.0 centimeters. Now, if they didn't tell us what to round to, there's still a way to do this. And that would be looking at the other sides. How much precision did they give for those? Well, it was to the nearest tenth. So uh, that, that matches up with what they're asking. So there's our first piece of information. We got it using cosine law. So we can now go back to our picture and update that side, which is over here. So now we have all three sides and one angle. So at this point, uh, we still need to get these sides. Uh, I, I still can't use uh, uh, trig ratios. <coughs> Excuse me, but I should I should see if I can use sine law now, and I can because I've got uh, complete uh, angle 
an opposite side pair, which I didn't have before. And plus I've got these two sides as well. So um, basically anytime you use cosine law um, for a triangle, you only have to use it once because that will give you enough information that you can then use sine law for. So please don't use cosine law more than once for the same question. <coughs> okay, so let's set up our sine law equation. Um, so at this point, we, we can kind of pick and choose which angle do we want to solve for because it really doesn't matter. Um, so if I picked F and I'm trying to get angle F, that means my sine law ratio will have sine F in the top corner and a little F on the bottom. So there's my side angle pair. Now I, I need to pick my second pair. Rather than write them all out again, let's try to save some time. My second uh, ratio here I have to know both of the things. So that would be an angle and its opposite side. Well, the only angle I know is E. And uh, of course, now I know little e as well. So I'm going to say sine E over little e. Okay, because D would, I wouldn't have enough to use D at this point because I don't know that angle either. So I can't use an equation with two unknowns. So this has to be the E pairing. Okay, so now let's plug in what we know. So sine f, that's what we're trying to find, angle f. And uh, little f is 6.2. It's opposite uh, angle f. And then sine e, well, we know what e is. Angle e is 64, so put that right in there. And uh, then what we just discovered here, uh, little e is 6.0. Okay, so now we go about uh, solving for F, which is an angle. Uh, so first thing I do is multiply both sides by 6.2. So I get sine F equals 6.2 times sine 64 over 6.0. Okay, we're almost there. Now we take the sine inverse of both sides. So I get angle F is equal to sine inverse of that whole thing, 6.2 sine 64 over 6.0 and we find we get now this we have to round to the nearest degree so that works out to 68 degrees so now I go back to my picture I know angle F is 68 put that here and now the only thing we need is that third angle so do I need to use sine law again I don't because I know that these three angles add to 180 so you can see the steps are getting easier and easier as you get more information. So angle D, which is the last thing we have to find, is equal to 180 minus the other two angles. So that would be 64 and 68. If I subtract that, I get angle D is equal to 48 degrees. And there's my last of the six measurements. Put that back up here. And we have now solved this triangle. You can see we've got all three sides, all three angles. So, uh, and we actually used three different tools for this solution. Started with cosine law, and we had no choice. That's the only thing that we could use. And then we used sine law because the first step gave us enough information that we could now use sine law. And then the last piece was just using the fact that the sum of the three angles is 180, uh, much easier to do than doing sine law again, or God forbid, cosine law again. So uh, there's some questions here to try out. Make sure you remember uh, what you did in grade 10. Okay, uh, so we'll see you on the next lesson. Take care.